Hello and welcome to this tutorial. A famous man once said, they can take away our wives, but they can never take away our free tool. We was obviously a frame builder MRD free tool fan. In this tutorial we will be looking at frame builder MRD's free tool module. We will be covering the following areas. Brief overview of the icons. Designing some frames from reference lines. Generating and tooling your frame according to specification. Tips and tricks. Let's get free tooling. Access the free tool module from the main frame builder tool set. The first set of icons are used to draw a new profile and change properties of an existing profile. The second set is used to change the orientation of a profile, for example, rotate. The third set is used to tag profiles for tooling. Tag green or yellow to avoid lip and notch cuts for structural profiles. The number 3 icon used to tool generated profiles. The fourth set is used to group and categorize a collection of profiles. The next set is used to trace a profile using reference lines. Similar to SketchUp's pencil tool. The only difference is, these reference lines do not split at intersections. The number 2 icon is used to generate those reference lines into profiles. The next set is used to generate guidelines and points to help you plan and space your references lines. Guidelines are generated based upon the selected profile in your default settings. For example, guide points will be offset half the profile width and the full width. You will see how this is applied later on. The final set is used to extract a selected SketchUp face and place on the 2D plane. You can then work on the face and generate and replace back into position. You will see this application as well a bit later. We will now draw some reference lines and turn them into sections. Please pay attention to the behavior of intersecting lines drawn with SketchUp's pencil tool. As you can see SketchUp can split reference lines at intersections. You may not want this behavior when turning reference lines into profiles. To overcome this problem use Frame Builder's number one trace tool where lines intersect. I will demonstrate this. I will now use Frame Builder's number one trace tool to avoid splits in reference lines. As you can see, only two sections are generated from the reference lines. Okay wonderful. Let's pick up the pace and draw a simple wall frame using the free tool process. First, I will use SketchUp's rectangular tool to draw the border. Note you can use the pencil tool or frame builder's number one tool to achieve the same.
Magic, you now can inspect the generated profiles, rotate and move if need be. You will note the following. Generated sections are determined by the settings under the default properties. Edge clearances between flange and web are set under the default properties. Note the following for edge clearances. If the property auto trim is set to true, profiles will be automatically extended to the maximum, minus the edge clearance. In this case we have auto set to true with an edge clearance of 2 mm. This means, when the reference lines are generated, intersecting profiles will be extended from flange of the one profile to the web of the second and then trimmed down by 2 mm. So what happens when auto trim is set to false? When it comes to your wife, this may be dangerous but in our case it will take the static properties of top and bottom trim that is set under the default properties. Let's move on to tooling sections. In this part I will show you the following. How to tag a section to avoid notches and lip cuts. How to generate tooling for a selection of sections. Let me highlight the rules of tagging. First, tag green means any profile that is tagged green will not get a notch or lip cut. Instead the profile intersecting tagged green profiles will get the notch or lip cut. Second, tag yellow means any profile that is tagged yellow will also not get a notch or lip cut. However with yellow there are some exceptions. It will get a lip cut or notch if intersected with green but will avoid lip cut or notch with non-tagged profiles. I hope this is clear. Let it swirl around your head a bit. It will all make sense when you get into it. I will now tag this frame and generate tooling for dimples, notches etc. We then can inspect the tooling. Good, great, let's do this. I tagged studs to avoid notches and lip cuts. I then selected profiles I want to generate tooling for and clicked the number 3 tooling icon to generate tooling. As you can see, profiles that are tagged green have avoided notches where possible. This may be structural profiles such as studs or lateral bracing. We will now move on to grouping of profiles. Simple select the profiles you want to be part of the component and click the group icon. The following are some handy tips and tricks. Use the profile tool set to manually add or remove tooling in sections. To delete a manually inserted tooling point, hover over the tooling point. Click the type of tooling you want to delete from the profile tool set. For example, if you want to delete a dimple, select the dimple icon from the profile tool set. You will then hover over the tooling point. When the orange light turns red, hit the D key on your keyboard. Another tip is to save your line drawings before you generate. And generate only a copy of the collection of reference lines. This way you can always make changes if you are not happy with the overall configuration of the frame. This brings us to the end of part 1 of the free tooling tutorial. In the next parts we will be going on to much more advanced free tooling.
options such as face and replace, in place 3D free tooling will be discussed. Please tell all your friends to subscribe. Take care and goodbye for now.